Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for being here today. Uh, first off, I want, I'm the Rockland County Executive Ed Day. I'd like to introduce some of the folks who are here today. We have a Deputy Commissioner of Health, Katherine Johnson Southern. We have our Rockland Chief of Patrol, Bill Barbera. We have Rockland County, uh, Rockland County Attorney, Tom Humback. Our Commissioner of Social Services, Joan Silvestri. Dr. Maria Mosquera, the Rockland County Department of Health, who has been in the lead in much of what we've been doing to combat the measles epidemic here in Rockland. We have Dr. Mary Leahy from Good Samaritan Hospital, and Dr. Sue Stone representing Nyack Montefiore, and she is the Infection Prevention Manager. And we also have Al Samuels from the Rockland Business Association here joining us. So anyway, so good afternoon, and I want to thank all of you for joining me today. And we are going to be uh, dealing with an important announcement. And, but first of all, we're going to address some of the misconceptions and concerns that have come from conjecture raised by the unfortunate and inappropriate leak of information earlier today. First off, members of county government and led, and led by county health department. Can you turn that off, please? That's even better. <laughs> anyway, as I said, members of county government and led by the county health department met with leaders and stakeholders of the communities most affected by this outbreak early this morning. They have first-hand knowledge of both the dynamics of the measles outbreak and the specific steps that we are taking going forward. I want to emphasize that. They were, by and large, highly supportive of this planned effort, details of which I, I will share with all of you now. Here in Rockland County, we have now entered our 26th week of this measles outbreak. This is nearly six months of investigating cases, holding clinics, and giving vaccinations. Our Department of Health must be commended for their hard work and dedication to protecting the public health here in Rockland. And to be honest, without their efforts, this outbreak would have been far, far worse. By the numbers, last year, not just one, but seven unvaccinated travelers diagnosed with measles entered our county between October 1st and October 17th, leading to 153 confirmed cases. And this is the longest outbreak in the U.S. due to measles since the disease was officially eradicated in 2000. According to New York State Immunization Information Systems, only 72.9% of the 1 to 18 year olds in Rockland are fully vaccinated against the measles. That is including the 16,958 MMR vaccines given to those who are un or under vaccinated since the outbreak began. And I will point out the lion's share of those vaccinations were given out at Rapua Health Center in New Square in Rockland County. These numbers speak volumes as to why this outbreak is ongoing. Unfortunately, however, not everyone has been following the example set by many others in this county and the health department by doing everything possible to combat this disease. As this outbreak has continued, our inspectors have begun to meet increasing resistance from those they are trying to protect. We see more and more instances of infected, minor, unvaccinated people going to places such as the Palisade Center Mall which has thousands of people go back and forth through their doors. Our health inspectors have been hung up upon or told not to call again. They've been told we're not discussing this, do not come back. We're visiting the homes of infected individuals as part of their investigations. This type of response is unacceptable and frankly irresponsible. It endangers the health and well-being of others and displays a shocking lack of responsibility and concern for others in our community. It is extremely difficult for our Department of Health to do their jobs when people refuse to cooperate with our investigators and fail to notify doctors when they are sick. Let me be very clear about this. All these inspectors are looking to do is identify the details and movement of infected individuals so that we can make notifications to protect the health of the larger public. Every action we have taken since the beginning of this outbreak has been designed by the Department of Health here in the county in conjunction with the State Department of Health to do two things, maximize vaccinations and minimize exposures. We, have been take, we are taking today the next step in that endeavor. As this is, and this is in continued support of the efforts of, the, of our Department of Health. I have heard some say that those contract the measles rather than get vaccinated become immune. So what's the difference? Why bother? The difference is that 83.7% of our confirmed cases have been those in 18 years of age or younger. That's 128 young people who have fought this disease. Contracting the measles is not, the, not only dangerous while you have it, but it can lead to complications years later. Measles parties are not the preferred treatment 
those days are over. Every new case is a roll of the dice that could bring on pneumonia, encephalitis, or swelling of the brain, or cause premature birth, which can even lead to kind of complications and even death. Well, what about the infants who are out there with mom and dad? My newborn grandson is an infant. What about the pregnant, those pregnant and those with compromised immune systems, like cancer patients and survivors? These are the people we need all to step up for. To that end, I am taking further action to protect the public health and in conjunction and support of the ongoing effort of the County Department of Health. In order to prevent any more children from falling ill with this dangerous disease, I am today declaring a countywide state of emergency. Effective at the stroke of midnight tonight, March 27th, anyone who is under 18 years of age and is unvaccinated against the measles will be barred from public places until the declaration expires in 30 days or until they receive at least their first shot of MMR. Those under 18 years of age who are unable to be vaccinated for confirmed, documented medical reasons are exempt from this declaration. That is simply the right thing to do. We believe this to be the first such effort of this kind nationally, and the circumstances we face here clearly call for that. Rockland will lead the way in service and safety to the people here. Our Department of Health will be holding a free MMR vaccination clinic, something they've done many, many times, tomorrow afternoon between 1 and 3 p.m. on the second floor of Building A at the Robert Yeager Health Complex. No, we are also reaching out to our community health partners to schedule more clinics later this week. We have done this successfully since October and will continue until we eradicate the disease permanently. We want to be partners for compliance with this effort that will ensure the public health. That is the purpose of the action today. In addition, we are asking our local municipalities and people in control of areas of assemblage to post the signs we'll be disseminating this afternoon that will detail the emergency declaration. Also, with the assistance of the Departments of Health and Department of Law, we're in the process of drafting a local law to provide for the protection of county residents and visitors in the events of outbreak of communicable disease for consideration by our partners in government, the Rockland County Legislature. We owe this to the residents of this great county, so we never, ever have to go through this again. This is an opportunity for everyone in their community to do the right thing for their neighbors and come together. That's what this is about now. We must do everything in our power to end this outbreak and protect the health of those who cannot be vaccinated, for medical reasons, and that of children too young to be vaccinated, and also those who are at risk, as I mentioned earlier. We also recognize that major religious holidays will soon be upon us, and we want people to be able to celebrate. We don't want to see a repeat how this outbreak started when we saw people gather together and then fall ill last fall. We want everyone to enjoy their friends and families, something quite difficult with the specter of measles hanging over their heads. What this is and what this is not, so I'll be very clear for everybody to hear this, there will not be law enforcement or deputy sheriffs asking for your vaccination records. That is ridiculous. To repeat, that is not nor will it ever be the focus of this effort. However, if you are found to be in violation of this declaration, your case will be referred to the district attorney's office. That just comes with the emergency declaration and is proscribed by law. Parents will be held accountable if they are found to be in violation of the state of emergency. And the focus of this effort is on the parents of these children. We are urging them, once again, now with the authority of law, to get your children vaccinated. Many people have done the right thing, and I want to acknowledge all of them. As fact is, we've given over nearly 17,000 17, MMR vaccinations since October of last year. So most people are getting it. Unfortunately, we're seeing a reversal of that trend, and increasing numbers are not. We must not allow this outbreak to continue indefinitely or worsen again. We will not sit idly by while children in our community are at risk. This is a public health crisis, and it is time to sound the alarm and take the appropriate action to ensure that everyone takes proper action to protect themselves and their neighbors for the health and safety of all of us in Rockland. I would like to take a moment to introduce one other speaker who has been involved, who's part of the health department. She is the deputy commissioner of health, Kate Johnson Southern, who will briefly detail what her inspectors in the department have been dealing with during these six months, especially of late. Kate. 
Good afternoon, and thank you, Mr. Day. I stand before you representing the Rockford County Department of Health. Um, and for nearly six months, uh, the Health Department has been steadfastly addressing this measles outbreak. We've conducted investigations, we've provided education, we've done tremendous outreach with our community partners, and we've provided and offered immunizations, vaccinations, um, held many pods and clinics. Um, but despite all of the overwhelming cooperation that we received within the county, the number of cases continues to rise. And currently we have 153 cases, and we need to remember that that number reflects only the reported cases of measles here in the county. The county executive's emergency order today is intended to support the health department's efforts to date. It's another layer um, of awareness and to impress, up, impress upon all members of the public the seriousness of this ongoing outbreak. Um, having the majority of people cooperating is wonderful, but it's just not enough. We need total participation in this effort to protect all of our residents, in particular the most vulnerable members of the public, infants, the elderly, and the immunocompromised. I look forward to working together with everyone in Rockland County to end this outbreak, and I thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, will is it same questions now? Mr. Day, uh, how can you enforce this? You mentioned there won't be checks. How does this uh, get enforced? Well, uh, to a great degree, we are expecting people to understand that we are bumping up the seriousness publicly uh, through government regulation, and we are expecting families and parents to realize that it is now against the law to do it, and we're expecting them to take a step forward and be part of the solution to this crisis. Again, we're, we're, not, we're not a society here where we're going to go around chasing people down. That's just not a viable way to go. We're here to ensure the health department completes their mission, and we're doing it in such a way to just get the tension at this point so people understand the seriousness of what they are doing and not doing. What's the penalty if people violate the order? It is, it is listed as a B misdemeanor, which I believe is six months in jail, $500 or a, and or a $500 fine. Again, just to be clear, this is not something we're looking to do. The, the, the emergency declaration itself by, by law comes with that um, that is signed level. It's the lowest misdemeanor, lowest crime there is. If this work. doesn't work, what are your next steps? Are you thinking about other options, potentially quarantine options? I'm, I am very hopeful that the step we're taking now, which has never been done, as far as we know, across the entire nation, will get the attention of many. Are yes, any no. Orthodox do, Jewish do leaders you all working know, with you? Um, do you know who, who's not vaccinated? Do we know who's not yeah, vaccinated? So, yeah, you said you gave the 72 some odd percent. Of, uh, like, where do you... Where do you get the number from? New York State keeps numbers of vaccinated individuals, and so our numbers come through New York State, through NYSE. Do you have an idea of who's not vac vaccinated specifically or not we know specifically? We those who are vaccinated. We talk in 72% of those who are vaccinated. And I, I want to get that question, yes. Yeah, have any leaders of the Orthodox Jewish community in Rockland been willing to work with you, or are they ignoring this? No, actually, the cooperation has been meritorious. Um, our, health, our health commissioner, uh, Dr. Rupert, who is away right now, uh, she had met early on with over 100 rabbis in the area which geographically uh, we are finding most of the cases. Uh, in addition, the, um, the, the um, Council of Rabbis has made it very clear as far back as 2015 that there is no such thing as a religious exemption. They urge families to get immunized. We've had varying degrees of compliance in the various schools uh, in the areas most hard hit, which largely has been the Orthodox community. Um, but it would be unfair for me to say we have not gotten cooperation. We have. In fact, like I said, today at 11 o'clock this morning, there are a number of members of the Orthodox community who met with the Department of Health and representatives of my office. So there was a clarity as to what we were looking to do, which is why it was a little troubling to see this get out as early as it did. So, um, no, to answer your question, they are aware of it. Um, as I said from the outset, they, are, they have been supportive of what we've been trying to do and the reasons why we're taking the next step now. Yes? Point out, this outbreak's been going on for six months. Why are we only doing this now, declaring a public emergency? If I did it three months ago, I'd be told I was overreacting. If I do it three months from now, I'll be told I'm taking my time. That comes with leadership. It, it, it is appropriate now. What we're seeing now, we're seeing that 
trajectory changing. We were doing quite well early on. People were getting it. They were understanding through the cooperation of folks in the various communities. Parents were getting the children immunized. We are now seeing pockets of resistance. We've had non-religious schools get involved. We were just little, lately, early on, we were sued by the Waldorf School for the same reason, which is a, a, it's a private school, not religious based. So uh, the fact of the matter is, is that it was my judgment based upon what's been going on with an increase in resistance, with an, a, no change at all in the trajectory upward, or downward rather, um, seeing more cases come in and more exposures, seeing situations, most importantly, where tr people who not only are not getting vaccinated or having their children vaccinated, are going to areas in the entire county. Uh, this is not a geographical situation anymore. This is something that anybody could be affected by. So it's my judgment at this point we need to do something to be more supportive of the health department, as, as uh, Kate, uh, Deputy Commissioner Johnson Southern just mentioned, and to do it in a, as most moderate way possible. It's an attention grab. There's no question about it. And that's what we're doing. Yes. What qualifies as a public place? Is that anything outside your home? Is that school, hospital? It's not in place. Well, let me let me let the uh, county attorney be more definitive about that so we get the correct answer. Your name, sir? Thomas Humbach, county attorney for the county of Rockland. Uh, we've defined a place of public assembly as any place that uh, people get together for civic, social reasons. It uh, can include um, shopping centers, uh, places where people do business, restaurants, places typically where a bunch of people who are not related show up and gather together. Schools. Schools are included. Parks and playgrounds. Outdoor places are not included. Houses of worship. Houses of worship are included. Houses of worship inside the homes. No, homes are not included. Well, if they have a certificate of occupancy or some other license to do the function of a place that is defined as a place of public assembly, then that private home will also be on the list of exclusions. Hospitals? Hospitals are included. However, there's an exception. If you're going there for treatment, please call ahead. Let them know that somebody who's unvaccinated is on their way so that they can take the proper precautions. Will that be a place where people could potentially be prosecuted if it turns out that you go to the ER for some sort of emergency and you're asked if your if a child's vaccinated? The answer is no. Will police come to the ER? And First, the directive says where practicable call, practicable call ahead. So an emergency situation, it wouldn't even apply. Um, you know, what the reaction of the authorities is going to be is going to be up to the authorities. Do you anticipate having to go so far as to prosecute somebody? I would not be doing such a thing. I don't have that authority. As the county attorney, that is a criminal matter. Yeah. Let, let me offer a direct answer. This is going in a direction that, frankly, I want to put people's mind at ease. I've already spoken to the county, um, District Attorney uh, Kevin Galise already, and he said he would take a moderate approach to this. He would take a look at the facts, circumstances, and make decisions based upon that. Again, this effort is not meant to act upon what we're allowed to do legally, which is arrest people. We're not looking to do that. This is really educational at this point, but with a firm stroke of the pen doing something that, again, has never been done, this is the second emergency I declared in five years as county executive. That in of itself is going to get somebody's attention. We're trying to gain compliance. The only way we could step up our game right now, above and beyond what we've been doing, is to let people understand this is serious, that this is the law, that it's important for you to be part of the solution. If we don't do that, we're going to continue in the same direction we are now, which is going to be an ongoing situation with the measles epidemic. Yes. Sir, can you just help me check my math? So the Census Bureau says about 28% of Rockland County is 18 or younger. It's about 92,000 people. You're saying that up to 18,000 people in that group are not vaccinated? I'm sorry, you're saying 18% of people in that group are not vaccinated? The, 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 number, the numbers that I gave you are under the age of 18, and we have a 72% rate, I believe I mentioned earlier, for the vaccine. I do not know the numbers from the Census Bureau. We so, can do that off camera. Well, I checked that, yeah. and so if I'm doing the math, and I'm fairly certain I'm doing it correctly, you're saying there's 16,632 people under the age of 18 who are not vaccinated <laughs> and are subject 28%, not 18%. Possible. I, 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 can't, I can't challenge the figures, but we have a large segment of young people who are not vaccinated. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure you're anticipating legal challenges uh, to this. What would you say to someone who uh, claims this is impeding on their religious rights? Right. 
Well, first of all, let's be clear about something. There's no religious exemption. Uh, the, fact that, the fact that we got nearly 17,000 young people immunized in a largely orthodox community tells us it is not a religious exemption. When the board of the Council of Rabbis says to us they want children immunized, it tells us it's not a religious exemption. When a hundred rabbis in the community work with us to get people immunized, it tells us it is not a religious exemption. So if somebody's saying it's a friend of the religious right, they have to come up with something that says shows us there is a religious objection. I'm a Christian. I know of nothing in my religion of that says that there is an issue. Now as far as medical issues, we made it very clear if you are medically challenged in any way, shape, or form, and a doctor has documented that, you are exempt from this. So again, we're never gonna have the best answer in all cases here. We're trying to make the best judgment based upon the circumstances. And what I would submit to everybody here is that we have now the worst outbreak in the nation. The time has come to do something that exhibits leadership and direction. That's what we're doing here. We're doing it in support of the existing health department efforts. When, uh, when I, we went to public school, they would kick you out of school if you didn't get your shots. So We, we, ha we have a very high degree of vaccination in our public school. To the county executive, not to, not to harp on this, but it's kind of alluding to me. If, let's say if a merchant overhears that someone say that someone in their restaurant is unvaccinated right. and, and calls the authorities, will they respond? Is, is there, if there's no active law enforcement, could there be a circumstance in which unwittingly law enforcement does get involved because of the circumstances? I, I, I can offer this as a former member of the NYPD. Uh, there's a word called discretion. The idea of this is not to arrest people. And besides which, if the person has if the person is the one with the measles, he's not the one the law is directed at. We are, asked, we, are, we are focusing on the parents of children under 18. So the person who is in a restaurant who's working, you know, he's, he or she is not going to be, it's a health issue now. That person should get medical assistance. So again, all I can say is that the focus of this is to tell parents that we expect you by, under the authority of law, to have your children vaccinated as long as they're going to go to public assemblies. So that five hundred dollars in the six months in jail will go to the parents. Yes. Of the, and then is one fifty one still the exact number of confirmed cases? Yes. Fifty three. One fifty three. Again, it's increasing as you can see. Have you spoken with leaders of the Jewish community about about people traveling back and forth to Israel? Because I know you're saying that some of this started because of people traveling back yes. from Israel. You know, obviously, let's say you, you do this, no matter what, you're not going to get every kid right. or every adult, right? So. You do this 30 days, you seem to have knocked it out, and then you still have this traveling back and forth to Israel. How does that... You know, I, I've had help? discussions with the mayors of New Square, the mayors of Kayser, regularly on this. We've had a number of discussions about this. But again, here's the point we have to not miss. Herd vaccination. You have that when somebody has the measles and comes back from another country, guess what? You have nothing to worry about, by and large, unless except for those who are immunochallenged. Uh, um, so when we're never going to get everybody. It's going to be, this is life. Life means stuff happens, okay? So what we're doing here is trying to change a trajectory that's going in the wrong direction. And the only way we can do this right now, the tools we have to do it, is not continue what we've been trying because it has not been working to the degree we wanted it to. We have another tool, the emergency declaration, which I've author I'm authorizing today, yes. Have you been working with you know New York City and New Jersey officials because they've also been experiencing break outbreaks that are linked to this? Okay. And also, has the state had any input on this yeah. public emergency no. type right. of issue? For uh, right, two answers. <laughs> number one, our health department has worked with all their partners in the region. That's number one. The state department of health has done an admirable job in working with our local county department of health to try to get their arms around this and deal with it. As far as, did I ask the State Department of Health? Did they have any input on the public? No, not on this, because this was not a decision, this is not a Department of Health decision. And I will be very clear about this. This is a decision made in support of the Department of Health. Uh, we did speak about it at length. Uh, my Department of Health is aware of it. They have conveyed their thoughts to the state. So this is, this is a governmental decision that's made <coughs> by my administration to support the Department of Health. I have been relatively absent of this in the entirety of it all, because it's not my place to deal with the health issues, but right now it is my place to deal with the fact that our health efforts are being compromised slowly and we need to do something 
to get them back on duty. The vaccine is effective against the particular strain of measles that you're seeing yes. in Rockland County? Yes. Are, are, are you getting other uh, diseases when you vaccinate them? Because there's actually there's far more concerning diseases that have been wiped out by vac vaccination than measles. The only thing, only comment I'll offer on that is it is important that we all understand as a community that vaccination, if you're going to People Magazine and Jenny McCarthy and Bob Benero for your medical advice, you need to start re-examining your life. That's the fact of life. There's risk in everything. Could there have been a child, a few children who may have been compromised by a, a vaccination? Of course there could be. But there's something called the greater good here. And we are trying to do the best we can in society to make sure that we're okay. As I said earlier, measles parties are not the way to go. That's what I had to go through when I'm 67 years of age. My younger sister did not. What do we do next? Do we stop, do we stop inoculating against polio? Where does it stop? It, society has to come to an understanding at some point that we have a responsibility to the greater good of, of the community. Well, that's, are we concerned about things like that? Because then if, if they it, don't if, have the measles vaccinations, they don't have... Well, again, by and large, most, peop, most young people in Rockland County are immunized for the ones who go to public school. They got their shots. Next, Sir, next if you are not vaccinated and you are detained, Will you then be vaccinated? No forceful vaccinations, no. But again, we're talking about, we, me and you, we're a little bit too old for that. We're looking at under 18. And again, it doesn't fall to the child. Nobody's going to forcibly vaccinate somebody, but the parents will be held accountable, which frankly is the way it should be. Let me get so, so. Under what circumstances would you envision a case being referred to the DA's office? What kind of picture would you imagine that you look and say, oh, this one's going to... Where, where would you be identifying someone that you look and say, wow, you've got a kid under 18? Okay, I would, well, it would have to come to the attention of someone, obviously. Um, and if it came to the attention of someone, if it's an email or law enforcement personnel, phone call be made to the district attorney and there'll be a conferral. But would it, would it be these families that are not cooperating with health inspectors it, and staff? It, it and could focus? be, it could be, yes. If, if, we, if we have a situation where it comes to our attention that a parent is willingly knowingly not allowing the child to be vaccinated under the emergency order, there will be a referral to the district attorney. And from that point forward, he's up to the district attorney. Now, I, again, the focus is not to arrest and put people in jail. The arrest, the purpose of this is to have people comply with the law and comply with the vaccination. And just to clarify, you said earlier, this is the worst measles outbreak in the entire country? Is yes. that So that's based on figures from the national Institute of Health or? Since 2000? 2000. 2000. 2000. When the, right? And let me, let me throw one thing in that I mentioned earlier. This is since the disease in 2000 was eradicated. So the disease was eradicated. Think about that. Uh, what percentage are we, was, what, would be per immune? Probably about 90, 90, 95. 95 percent. Is there like a large answer? Oh, by, the, by the way, just so we're clear on something, I'll, I'll go right back to you. We discussed the issue of getting your first and second Good shot. Thank you you have to wait today. a period of time, I think 60 days, I think, for the second shot. So the goal we had, if you'd be fully immunized, you need two shots. That would kind of take it out of the 30-day window. It would take it into the holiday season. The question I asked at the time, what does one shot do? 93%. So we made an active decision to ensure that if people immediately comply with this, they wake up and vaccinate their children now and we're providing the opportunity for them to do it in conjunction with our community health partners in, this, in the local community geographic that's mostly affected in other areas. If they do it now, they can enjoy the holiday season come the Easter and Passover. After Roxy, two more questions. Yes. You said that this is education-based. Is there a large anti-vax community here, people who are willfully we, ignoring you know, it? We have, we have pockets of anti-vax, we'll call them anti-vax people here, um, but we have it in Westchester too. We found by conversation with, with um, with uh, um, County Executive Latimer. He, he had the same situation. Um, How large would you say it is? I have no idea. It's, it's, it, but the, again, the, the, the reality is, is that if we, if we have that herd inoculation, that herd vaccination rate, there is much less to worry about. And that's really what we're going for. Yeah. Just a medical question. Um, you know, you're focusing on children under 18. Right. What about the adults who are not vaccinated? Or, <coughs> the, or you're saying it's, you know, 30 years ago, they were vaccinated because people just were the vaccinated. Yeah, the vast majority of the, the target audience, as it were, is, is 
it's in the middle, the 70% range, I believe, uh, is under under 18 years of age. 84% 80, of our case, our confirmed cases are under 84. 84% of our confirmed case cases are under 18 years of age. And so, and then when you're talking about immunity issues, can you be an elderly person who's sick? You've been vaccinated many, many years ago, but because you have immunity issues, you can still get it? Or, you know, what's the technical? Should we have Dr. Mascara? Yeah, Dr. Mascara. Dr. Mascara. If you didn't say and spell your Everything you wish to know about measles, we're afraid yeah. to ask. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Mascara has done an amazing job for Rockland County and his community in, in grappling with the situation, and his, uh, her expertise really is well recognized. Well, my name is Maria Mosquera, and they are a young West GDRA. Um, for people that are immunosuppressed, there are certain people who have been previously vaccinated who would still be at risk for measles. If you've had cancer, you're on chemotherapy, um, you should speak to your healthcare professionals because you may actually be at risk. Okay. Okay. Um, Does the order include people that currently have measles? I'm sorry? Does the order include people that currently have measles of the 153 cases that they need to stay home too, or only unvaccinated? If you, if you have measles, you should stay home. Please. He's saying a child no, who has recovered from measles but is still unvaccinated. Does it include that child? I no, they currently have it. Still, it says 153. Yeah, let me. <laughs> yes, because somebody who currently has the measles is not yet serologically immune. They don't have the, import, the immunity that you get from having the disease. Once it's over, then they will be immune and they'll be able to enter the uh, pub, place of the public. Okay. One more. Do you anticipate this being extended beyond 30 days? What circumstances might that I happen? left my crystal ball in the back. Mm -hmm. um, oh, look, to be very honest with you, I am hope this is not something we enter into lightly. We're doing this for a purpose, and, and frankly, a large purpose is the fact that we have the same type of situation religiously where we had in the pool, all right, where a lot of people are gathering. We have people who are not vaccinated, who, who had measles, come in, and people who are not vaccinated got sick. We don't want to see that happen again. We want people to enjoy their holidays. We want them to be with their friends and their families. And if they get their shots now, they will. And that really, the timing as to what three months, six months, eight months, nine months, this, the timing right now is ideal for a variety of reasons to take this action. And again, at the end of the day, our goal is to get across to everybody we can in Rockland County that you need to be responsible for your children, you need to do the right thing for your community, and let's eradicate measles like it was eradicated in 2000. Thank you.